Humans are designed for far more than survival. Now, this is something that creationists haven't picked up on and highlighted on, but it's something that I've written in my books, and uh, it's something that I think is important to the origins debate. This is a real weakness in the theory of evolution, because evolution can only ever produce what's needed for survival. That's a huge limitation. Every part of the human being, according to evolution, must be explainable in terms of survival. So our hands, our feet, our brains, our face, our hair, our eyebrows, whatever part of our body must be there because in some way it must have made us a better hunter-gatherer or fighter or escaper, something that helped us to survive. But that is a great weakness because if you look at the evidence, human beings are clearly designed for more than hunter-gathering. We are designed for building, reading, writing, music, sports, artistic activities. And when you look at that, you see the weakness in the theory of evolution. In fact, this principle of, of what I call over-design, actually you see it in the Bible. There are several verses, but one I'll quote here is from Psalm 8. For you have made man a little lower than the angels. Man is not down there with the beasts. Man is up there with the angels. We are over-designed. And I'll mention this, this term of over-designed now. With respect to survival, humans are over-designed. Over-designed in a positive sense, not a negative sense. Humans are like a high-performance sports car. Uh, I do work with Jaguar sports cars. And with a high-performance car, you make it go faster than it needs to. You make it more comfortable than it needs to. You make it more beautiful than it needs to be. And that's like the human being. We are super high performance. We are God's sports cars on the earth. First of all, man has a unique bipedal design. Apes are quadrupeds. They're designed to walk on four limbs. We are biped. We walk on two legs. And do you know what that means? That means we are 100% different to apes. We're not 5% different. We are 100% different. It's very helpful to look at the outside in, not from the bottom up. Don't, don't worry about DNA. Look at how we actually look and perform. We are 100% different. And there are a huge number of design features that go into our upright stature. And those unique features go from head to toe, literally from our head to our big toe. If I just run through these briefly, in our, in our ears, we have a vertical balance because we have those three semicircular canals. In the case of humans, the vertical ones are enlarged, showing that humans are designed to walk in the vertical plane. In the case of apes, they have three semicircular canals of a similar size, showing that apes are designed to move through trees in three dimensions. Humans have a flat face, and that's important so we can see the ground right in front of us so we don't stumble when we walk. But apes have a chin that comes right out. They cannot see the ground below them. Humans have an upright neck joint. Our foramen magnum enters the skull underneath. With apes, it enters from behind. With humans, we have an S-shaped uh, spine. With, in the case of apes, they have a C-shaped spine. Humans have an upright uh, hip joint. Uh, humans have angled femur bones that bring the feet below the center of gravity of the body. Humans have upright uh, knee joints, and humans have long legs. Humans have arched feet, and humans have a strong big toe. So you see, from head to big toe, humans are different to apes. In particular, humans have a wonderful arched foot. From a mechanical point of view, the most wonderful parts of your body are your hands and your feet. You may not think your feet are the most beautiful part of your body, but believe me, your feet are unique in creation because apes do not have arched 
feet. Our arch gives us balance. Apes don't have an arch. They have a flat uh, foot because their feet are basically like hands. Because we have an arched foot, we can feel the heel of our foot and we can feel the sole of our foot. It's very easy for me to stand here. I can get balance because I can feel the back of my feet and the front of my feet. If an ape stood next to me, that ape would be wobbling all over the place because it could not feel the front or the back. And if he tried to stand there for more than a minute, he'd probably flop over because he could not get that front back balance. Apes do not have a big toe. The big toe is very important for walking and for running. If you want to know what it feels like for an ape to walk on two legs, because of course they can a little bit walk on two legs. If you want to know what it feels like, do a handstand, then walk on your hands. That's how it feels like for an ape to walk. It's hard work. They cannot walk very long distances on two legs. Humans also have three-point contact on their feet. One point at the heel and one by the big toe, one by the little toe. Three-point contact, any engineers here will know, is the perfect interface with the ground. I can easily stand on one leg because I put the center of gravity through those three points on the ground. If there was an ape next to me tried to stand on one leg, he would immediately flop over because he does not have three points of contact on his feet. And just to say one more thing on this slide, if anyone who's a sportsman will know that the key to being good at sport is to be able to push off the sole of your foot, the front of your foot, that helps you to accelerate, to dodge, to turn. Apes cannot play sports because they cannot stand on the front of their feet. So humans have unique agility on two legs. Humans have the ability to run long distances. Did you know that humans have the potential to run over 150 miles in one single day? I'm sure none of you can do that, but you actually have the potential to do that. Apes can't do a fraction of that distance. And humans have a unique ability to play ball carrying uh, sports because we stand on two legs, our hands are free. And it's amazing what sports humans can do, carrying the ball. I'm sure when God created man, he had in mind baseball and golf and tennis. Actually, I'm not sure if he had American football in mind. Uh, <laughs> I still do not understand that sport. Surely, if God wanted us to play that, he would build shoulder pads uh, in us. But man is wonderfully designed for work and for play. And just to give you an evidence of overdesign, one of the things my research group found was the knee joint has a wonderful locking mechanism. So when you stand up, your knees lock and you don't need to tense your legs to be in the standing position. It makes it very easy for me to lecture because I just stand up and lock my knee joints. But that's hard for evolution to explain because the evolutionist can't say an ape man had a better chance of survival if he could stand and give a lecture. That doesn't really make any sense. But this is what you would expect if God had designed man. So secondly, a second thing that makes you glorious and special is skillful hands. Uh, many of these things we take for granted, but our hands are a masterpiece of design. We can make a pinch grip with all of our fingers. Apes can't do that. We can also make uh, a strong pinch grip or a sharp pinch grip. Our hand is perfectly designed for a circular pinch grip, and it's those pinch grips which is the secret of the great skill of the human hands. Our hands can go from perfectly flat to a clenched fist. Apes only have a curve on their hands for gripping onto branches. That means we can make every position with our hands. We also have fine muscle control, very delicate muscles that enable our fingers to move very precisely. We have many touch sensors on our hands. If you want to know what it's like to be an ape, put a really thick pair of gloves on for a week and try and do all your tasks in your hand. Even then you'll have better hands 
than apes. But these things make us 100% different to apes. Forget 5% different. We are 100% different to apes with our skillful hands. If you could look under the skin of your hand, you would see the most amazing network of tendons and muscles and ligaments. Uh, it is a masterpiece of design. My research group has tried to make a robotic hand. This is a picture of the hand my research group produced. We produced this as an exoskeleton, and we've tested it on stroke patients to give them, uh, help them to do exercises. And uh, it was a humbling process again. Anything you try to copy of God's designs is a humbling process. It is virtually impossible to replicate, especially the flexibility of the palm of the hand. That's another secret of the brilliant design of the hand. Uh, we published this uh, in an engineering uh, conference, uh, but it gave me another glimpse into the wonder of the design of the human body. Our hands have amazing skills. Uh, if, if you can play musical instruments, uh, I'm in awe of what you can do, that precision and speed and feeling. If you can knit like this, I am really in awe of you because I don't know how people can do that uh, thing that looks to me an impossible thing to learn. But when you knit, you have multiple grips and precision movement. And there is evidence of overdesign. The human being is perfectly designed to hold a pen. As you can see in this picture, the middle finger, index finger and thumb all come together for a tripod grip. So not only can we make pinch grips, but we can even make a tripod grip. The human hand is perfectly designed to hold a pen. How does the evolutionist explain that? Why does holding a pen make it easier to be a hunter-gatherer, to be a fighter, to escape? How does that help us to survive? The evolutionist has to come up with some really odd stories. The evolutionist has to say something like, those ape men who could fill in a cave tax exempt form were <laughs> more likely to survive than those who couldn't fill in a tax, cave tax exempt form. Uh, you have to come up with some really weird stories to explain the features of the human being. Humans have this ability to play music. Isn't that just what you'd expect if God had designed us? But not what you'd expect if we had evolved to be hunter-gatherers. You see the importance of this principle of over-design. 